This is Russia's average GDP growth rate from 2010 to 2020. In the last decade, the country saw its highest economic growth in the first quarter of 2012 at 5.3%, and its lowest in the second quarter of 2020 at negative 5.6%. The figures from last year are of course attributable to the coronavirus pandemic and were largely unavoidable. But even when we omit this latest data, we can still see how unstable Russia's economy is. Compare it, for example, with the GDP growth rate of the US, the UK, and the Eurozone. They, unlike Russia, have experienced a steady upward trend in GDP. So what is behind Russia's roller coaster of an economy? Well, to answer this question, we must understand first that Russia is a commodity-driven economy. Its GDP is greatly influenced by the prices of commodities, namely oil and natural gas. In fact, together, these two natural resources make up roughly 50% of its fiscal revenue and 30% of its GDP, depending on the year. The country produced almost 11 million barrels of oil per day in 2019, behind only the US and Saudi Arabia and ahead of Iraq and Iran. Such a reliance on commodities has drawbacks, however, such as economic instability. It also leads the Russian economy to suffer from Dutch disease, a situation where a country's focus to develop natural resources is detrimental to other economic activity. This all means that if the price of oil were to drop, for example, Russia's net exports would too. And since net exports are a component of aggregate demand, the AD curve shifts inwards. In this way, for every dollar the price of oil falls, the Russian economy loses billions. If we go back and plot oil prices against the country's growth rate, we can see this effect in action. After recovering from the global financial crash in 2009, Russia's economy boomed as a result of high oil demand. Nevertheless, from 2014 to 2016, oil prices plummeted 70%, the biggest decline since World War II, leading to negative economic growth and a consequent recession. Prices eventually regained momentum by 2017, however, reviving Russia's stalled economy. Nonetheless, oil is not the sole determinant of the country's economy. For example, in 2014, dictator Putin ordered a military intervention in neighbouring Ukraine in the midst of widespread chaos there and the removal of their pro-Russian president, Viktor Yanukovych. This was followed by the annexation of the Crimean Peninsula, which serves as a strategic access point to the Black Sea. The invasion was condemned internationally, with many countries implementing economic sanctions against Russia, to which Russia responded in kind. All four components of AD had been hit. Consumption and investment had suffered from crashing consumer and business confidence, net exports as a result of trade sanctions and nosediving oil prices, and government spending from being diverted to quote-unquote defence. This all compounded devastatingly for the Russian economy, with the ruble hitting all-time lows against the dollar and the euro. So far, we have seen why Russia has been predisposed to negative economic growth and instability. But how could the resurgence of 2017 to 2019 be explained by anything other than rebounding oil prices? Firstly, a steadily declining unemployment rate up until 2020 has certainly contributed to Russia's economic growth. This has increased disposable income, driving consumer spending up. Secondly, Russia has finally stabilised inflation after two decades of chaotic price levels. This has restored some consumer and business confidence though the ruble is still avoided by many investors. Finally, the country has also taken steps to lessen its dependence on oil. The government has established a sovereign wealth fund of over $125 billion, a state-owned investment scheme that generates money for both the private and public sectors. So what does the future hold? Coronavirus has clearly undone much of Russia's recent economic growth, so the question is whether the country will return to a path of gradual recovery. It certainly has the potential, it is generally acclimatized to the debilitating effects of trade sanctions, and its economy has stabilized in recent years. Nevertheless, there is still a large amount of uncertainty, as so much depends on its one policymaker. Furthermore, with recent political unrest showing no signs of stopping, this uncertainty is only magnified. Even if Russia were to experience substantial economic growth, however, the country would almost unquestionably continue to be one of the most unequal nations in the world as any extra zeros only seem to register in one man and his extended family's bank accounts.